Moving on now to the last operation on my wheels. And I'll just uh, do a little explanation before I move on. What I'm going to do now is, on my, fi on my finished wheels, I've got to put a crank, a hole for the crank pin to fit, one inch from the centre, on, on a one inch radius. It's got to be half inch reamed, the diameter of the hole, straight through. And it's got to be the same on every wheel. So we'll do it how the book's telling us to do it because there's there's many different methods you could use for getting them uh, holes in a in a one inch offset exactly in the same position on each wheel. So we'll do it how the book's telling us. So in the jig, you've got to mark off from the centre one inch radius on the centre line. And we've got to drill then a hole in the jig 9 16 diameter. Now that's to allow your half inch reamer to run into when you're, when you're drilling. So I'm just putting my bolt in the centre and I face the bolt up so I get, get the point of my tool dead in the centre of the, work, of the jig. Then I've set my dial to zero on my cross slide. Just a second. Set my dial to zero. Then I'm going to move out one inch from the centre. Which in, in on my metric lathe it's uh, 25.4. And if you can see, I've scribed a, li a line on, this, on the diameter of one inch with, with, a, with a sharp pointed tool. Once I've got that on then, while it's set, I've put my tool back into the centre, just touched onto the actual jig by a couple of thou, and then I've scribed a line across to give me my centre line and I've done the same on the old E across there just scribe the tool across and that's given me a centre line now there so I'm going to pop that now and then I'm going to set that pop mark up in the chuck so it's running central to the spindle so I'll do that now OK, I've got the centre punch mark offset now in my chuck so that it's running exactly in the centre of my spindle. I've put my clock on the face and obviously with it being elliptical like that I can only mark, I can only measure about three quarters of the face. With my clock where it's touching I can't get it no close to the centre because of this boss. When it's touching, it's, it's hovering around within a thousandth of an inch. So I'm happy with that. Because we're not doing any facing, we're just doing, we're just going to bore a hole in it. But it's anyway, it's near enough anyway, that a thousand. And then... You must run at a slow speed while you're doing this because everything's out of balance. I don't know if you can see my centre pop there, I'll just zoom in a bit. Perhaps you can't quite see it because of my centre. Anyway, I've got a revolving centre in and I've got the point of my centre now exactly on that dot. So, turning that racket off, uh, I'm going to centre drill that now and then drill it out 9 sixteenths. Then I'll put a wheel in and then we'll take it from there.
just putting a center in it then I'm going to run through with a small a smaller drill and then put my 9 16 drill in Put a pilot hole in 5 16 diameter, I'm just going to follow through with 9 16 You've not got to go the whole way through, you've just got to just go deep enough so there's clearance for your reamer to run into when you're actually reaming your wheels. Probably just go in about half an inch. Right, I know it may look a little precarious that for anybody that's setting out just on a beginner's curve on machining, but it's important that when you've got some offset like that and there's a big throw on it, you've got to make sure that your jaws aren't going to catch your slot, your, your saddle, and so just you know have a have a little dummy run with it out of gear and make sure nothing's going to catch. And just keep your hands out of way of these jaws that stuck out, and you'll be fine, I think. Um, I know it looks a bit precarious, but as long as you follow that procedure, make sure nothing's going to catch, you'll be fine. Right, so I've drilled in about half an inch now, so I've got me one inch offset there. I can now put my wheels in on that centre line. And then uh, drill and ream all my wheels half inch diameter. Right, I'm moving on to my next clip now for my wheels. I'm ready for I'm ready for drilling the uh, crank holes where the crank pins will fit. I've got my jig set up, and you probably haven't realised by now, but I'll tell you. Look closely at my jig. There's now two holes. Yeah, a chap that's never made a mistake's never done anything, that's what I say. Yeah, while I was talking to you, while I was drilling, doing that hole for the crank pin to, for me uh, reamer to drop into, when I was winding on my cross slide, I must have been talking and I must have missed a turn on, on cross slide. So it's actually turned out about four millimetre less than it should have coming out out towards the outer diameter so it ended up probably seven eighths rather than one inch anyway i've drilled another one now i'm ready to put my wheel in and let's just go back a bit so you can see what i'm doing i've scribed a center line a light center line right through my wheel to get me central in the my imitation casting and I've scribed a line on my jig from the centre line of the hole. So I'm just going to put my, my wheel onto that now. Lightly clamp it up. I'm just going to roughly line those lines up on the old ear. Just lightly clamp it. Then put my centre in, just to make sure my centre's come on that scribe line. You probably can't see it's at my centre point here, but I'm just going to move lathe round by hand, just to make sure I'm, I'm bang on that line. I think I've just got to come that way a fraction, that way. Right. 
that's it. So I can clamp that up now. Double check that it's not slipped. Right, that's that set up. Just remember when you when you're starting different operations, just make sure you you chuck and spin before you put that power on. I'd like to run it a bit faster speed than this, but I, I can't because of the uh, because it's out of true. So I'm just going to dock that centre on and then double check my line. Check twice, cut once. So because I'm going at a slower speed, I'm having to just go steady with me, my feeds on my tailstock because it's not really going fast enough. Right, so I've got my centre in and this is the procedure I'm going to use and uh, this is not the only way to do it. Many ways you could do this. I'm just going to go in and do a pilot hole with a drill. Because I've got this bronze insert on the outside of my cast iron, I've just got to be careful when I'm breaking into this bronze because bronze is a devil for, for grabbing old. If you're using steel to make your inserts it's no problem. But just for this eighth of an inch I've just got to be careful with this bronze. Once I've got through that imitation insert which I've fitted, I'm into cast iron then and it's, it's not a problem at all then. Now, I don't know if you can see, my drill's slightly wobbling. So make sure when you pilot hold it, you go in with a, a much lower diameter drill than you're going to finish up at. I'm not, bothered to, I'm not bothered that it's wobbling at the moment, and I'll explain why in a minute. I can correct this wobble on my next operation. So when your drill starts to wobble, for any beginners out there, if you get a wobble straight away as you're entering the first part of your cut, that's going to get exaggerated the, fur the longer the hole you're drilling. As you come through to the other end, the longer the hole, the more exaggerated and offset it it'll become at the other end. I'm into cast iron now, so I can uh, I can whip through that a bit quicker now. Right, we're just breaking through now. So my drill's now going into that hole in me in me jig. Right, to correct this drill wobble now, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow him with a a 12 mil slot end slot mill, which is short and rigid. And that'll correct me. That'll correct me hole as it's going through. 
ready for the reaming process. I've just got to get through this bit of this bronze like I did the drill. So if you've not got a 12mm slot mill, you could always put a very small, tiny boring bar in and run down it with a, bore, with a boring bar to get the hole corrected ready for your reamer. So I'm going to put a 3164th drill in now just to take that little bit of meat out so it's better for the reamer. for reaming it now. If you've not got a half inch reamer, you could just bore it out with a boring bar to half inch. Or alternatively just use a 12mm end mill and make your crank pins 12mm instead of half inch. Just um, take the bear off the back edge. Right, I'll have to zoom out a bit now, I think. That's it. So I've just got to do five more like that, and then the crank pin will be exactly the same on each wheel. And then they just want cleaning up, and then I'm going to paint them black on, on the inside. And then that's my wheels finished. Uh, I think next job will be to make the crank pins, make the actual crank pins. So, but for the wheels, that's it now. I think uh, I'm just going to get them painted up, and uh, I'll catch you on my next video. And I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. Bye for now, then.